So running doesn't affect anything? Apparently not. Which is odd considering it has a punishment for doing it too much. Yeah. But if it doesn't actually get you to cover faster, then I guess I've been lied to the entire time. That's why. What's wild. this? One of the Earth Clan. Ah, a very famous one, yes? You are the one called Shepard. The tale of how you survived the great tragedy on Akuz is truly remarkable. I am amazed each time I hear it. I don't like strangers keeping tabs on me. Forgive me, Earth Clan. My name is Barla Vaughn. My job makes it necessary for me to keep informed. I am a financial advisor to many important clients here on the Citadel. When someone as important as yourself arrives on the station, I take notice. I've heard you work for the Shadow Broker. Do you have any information about Saren? You're very blunt, Shepard. But you're right. I am an agent for the Shadow Broker. And I do know something about Saren. I'll be nice. I hear your information can be expensive. Normally, this information would cost a small fortune. But these are exceptional circumstances. So I am going to give it to you for free. What's the catch? Yeah. There is no catch. The Shadow Broker is quite upset with Saren right now. They used to do a lot of business until Saren turned on him. Saren betrayed him. Imagine that. No matter what you think of Saren, he's not stupid. He knows the Shadow Broker is a valuable ally. Turning on him doesn't make sense. Not unless something huge was at stake. I don't know the details, but the Shadow Broker hired a freelancer to deal with it. A Krogan mercenary. That's not much to go on. I just told you that the most famous specter in the galaxy betrayed the Shadow Broker. Quite a bargain, considering the price. Speak with the Krogan if you want to learn more. I heard he was paying a visit to Citadel Security. If you hurry, you might catch him before he leaves the Academy. Why is he there? Isn't it strange that a Krogan would want to speak with Seasick? Very. However, I doubt the visit was entirely his choice. You'll need to speak with him if you want to know more. Tell me more about your job. Galactic finance is incredibly complex. A mix <laughs> of laws and regulations from dozens of interstellar economies. I'm an expert in how all these economies interact. For a fee, I share my expertise. I also offer premium services for those clients who need someone to conduct business without drawing unwanted attention. Discreet and efficient. That's my motto. You thought Earth finance was bad. Bro. Wait till you've seen Space Galactic finance? <laughs> Intergalactic Naps. taxes? Naps! <laughs> Sounds pretty shady. Everything I do falls completely within the bounds of interstellar commerce law. Even so, many of my clients would prefer their transactions remain undisclosed. For example, suppose a Hanar ambassador was petitioning the council to reduce tariffs on Hanar goods. How would it look if he had money invested in a Hanar exporting company? Even if his true motives were to help his people, he would be accused of advancing the petition for his own personal gain. I can keep his personal finances private. That's kind of sus. Still sounds shady to me. Then we can only hope he will never be cursed with a large enough fortune to require my services. Interesting. Tell me more about the Shadow Broker. Most people think I deal in finances. But my real currency is knowledge. Ooh. I trade information, and it has made me very wealthy. Ooh. But the Shadow Broker is the true master. Every day he buys and sells secrets that could topple governments, always giving them to the highest bidder. Yet somehow he never seems to upset the natural balance of power. All those secrets being passed around seem to even out. 
Nobody ends up with an advantage in the end. Any guess what his identity might be? I don't know. Nobody does. A shadow broker could be any race, any gender. I have a theory that it's actually an entire group working under one identity. How else could they juggle so many contacts at the same time? How else could they keep all that information from getting crossed? But they've got the perfect setup. Every government is forced to play their game so they don't get behind. But no matter how long you play, no matter how many secrets you buy, you can never win. I thought you'd know more about the man you work for. From time to time, I come across information I sell to the Shadow Broker. That's my only involvement. I like it that way. The more you know, the more dangerous the game becomes. I don't like danger, Commander. I'll leave that to you. What's it like living here on the Citadel? The station is, without a doubt, the greatest wonder in the galaxy. It is a technological marvel, but its true splendor goes much deeper than the hull and engines. From the Presidium to the wards, the entire station is a testament to the success of the Council. All the species of Citadel space together in a single strong community. Tell me about the Presidium. What makes the Presidium so special? It is the political center of Citadel space. 80% of all intelligent species in the known galaxy acknowledge the Council's authority on interstellar matters. But only the most powerful and influential species have embassies here on the Presidium. This level of the station is reserved for the elite, Shepard. People like us. Tell me about the wards. What are the wards like? The cultural heart of the galaxy. They pulse with the lifeblood of millions of citizens from dozens of different species. You never know what you'll find out in the wards, Commander. It's always full of surprises. Fortunately, most of them are pleasant. Okay. I should go. Goodbye, Commander. Goodbye, piss bottle. Bag. <laughs> it's bag. All right, I guess it's a bag. How can I be of assistance to you today, Earth Clan? Nothing. I should go. Just wanted to see everything. All right, more data on non-council races. The Krogan. The Krogan evolved in a hostile and vicious environment. Until the invention of gunpowder weapons, eaten by predators was still the number one cause of Krogan fatalities. <laughs> Afterwards, it was death by gunshot. Oh. When the Solarians discovered them, the Krogan were a brutal, primitive species, struggling to survive a self-inflicted nuclear winter. The Solarians culturally uplifted them, teaching them to use and build modern technology so they could serve as soldiers in the Rachni War. Liberated from the harsh conditions of their homeworld, the quick-breeding Krogan experienced an unprecedented population explosion. They began to colonize nearby worlds, even though these worlds were already inhabited. Whoops. The Krogan rebellions lasted nearly a century, only ending when the Turians unleashed the Genophage, a Solarian-developed bioweapon that crushed all Krogan resistance. The Genophage makes only one in a thousand pregnancies viable, and today, the Krogan are a slowly dying breed. Understandably, the Krogan harbor a grudge against all other species. Yeah. Especially the Turians. Yeah. You think? You don't say. So you asked about the Genophage. That's what it is. All right. Okay. See those nuts? Oh. Fuck, fuck you. Fuck <laughs> shit. Oh my god, that is terrible. Yeah. Oh, that is shit. Yeah. Put down the uprising with uh, the extreme prejudice. Roughly, roughly, roughly the second Wow. Species, the Asari were the first species to... You know, a lot of words start with Geno. Mm -hmm. Phage isn't the only one. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, what do we got? Uh, we've seen this. The wards. The majority of the Citadel's population lives in the wards. The five massive, 
Five massive arms of the station that house the residential and commercial district. Many galactic races have established cultural enclaves here. Population density and cost of living are extremely high, akin to Earth cities such as Hong Kong and Singapore. The wards are open-topped, with skyscrapers rising from the superstructure. Towers are sealed against the vacuum, as the breathable atmosphere envelope is the only maintained by uh, to a height of about seven meters. The atmosphere is contained by the centrifugal force of rotation and a membrane of dense colorless sulfur hexafluoride gas, uh, gas held in place by carefully managed mass effect fields. The view from the wards is spectacular. In the background, stars Serpent Nebula and their nearby blue giant called the Widow move across the sky as the station rotates to stabilize itself. In the foreground, the lights of buildings and vehicles on the opposing ward arms perpetually shine. The Citadel has no real day or night. While the station keeps to standard galactic time for political functions, businesses rarely close, and residents acclimate to sleep and work according to personal need rather than a day-night cycle. That's kind of good. Whatever you need. That's good. Additions and modifications are constantly being constructed though they must stay within certain specifications that will not compromise the operation of the station. Occasionally, the keepers will descend on an area of the wards and move or change the architecture without explanation. Residents have learned to live with these inexplicable intrusions. Some people need the structure, though. You know, if you go up to um, anywhere too high in the, in the like, um, too high in the, uh, um, a given hemisphere and you get that Alaskan 30 days of night thing going yeah. on and, and such then you know uh, if you're okay with setting your own schedule then uh, f- freedom but if you need to see things change in order to you for, for your brain to you know keep your circadian rhythm going then uh, it's not good for everybody and technology I love it though credits or creds the standard credit was established by the Citadel's Unified Banking Act as, a cur- as the currency of interstellar trade. The credit has a managed floating exchange rate, calculated in real time by the central bank to maintain the average value of all participating currencies. Some regional currencies are worth more than the a credit, and some less. Hard currency can be stolen or counterfeited, so electronic fund transfers are the norm. More importantly, physical transactions cannot be easily tracked, making them ideal for tax evasion and the purpose the purchase of illegal goods Mm -hmm. when the alliance joined the citadel its various national treasuries were linked to the credit network a human with a bank account of mexican pesos japanese yen or indian rupees can purchase any item priced in credits at a fair market value all economies that participate in the credit network are required to price items in both local currency and credits oh okay local currency and galactic currency future money that's cool zenny so citadel rex if i push x everything is marked as red speak to rex the krogan bounty hunter is being questioned at the csec academy you can meet him there if you want to speak with him and then there's the um uh the garris stuff yes So, uh, you walked into this room. Uh, if you walk back out, take a look around. Goodbye. You have not yet met a Hanar. Right? I don't believe so. Would you like to? Yeah. Shopkeeper. Not this. Is this? Oh my god. That is someone. Ah, human. This one is greatly pleased to see you here in my decadent emporium. <laughs> <laughs> You okay? What? Who are you? 
This one's face name is Delaninder, though many in this place simply refer to it as Delan. Please take time to examine the fine goods it has for purchase, all of great worth. <laughs> Charles! <laughs> 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 What exactly do you sell? <laughs> Only the finest and most luxurious items that credits can buy. This one is able to procure almost any item the human would desire. For a price, naturally. Why do you refer to yourself as this one and it? For the same reason that humans are so inquisitive. It is part of our culture. Specifically, and are only refer to themselves in the first person with family or intimates. Oh. And we rarely do so with other species. It is just our way. Who are you? This one's face name is Delaninder, though many in this place simply refer to it as Delan. Please take time to examine the fine goods it has for purchase, all of great worth. Wow. So, fun fact. Um, that audio effect is accomplished by taking a recording of something, uh, play, inverting it to play backwards, putting an echo on that, and then reverting it back to forward. So, in other words, it's an echo that plays backwards. It's a reverse echo. Okay. And I figured that out manually because the first time I heard it was in the trailer for Devil May Cry part one or at the end he goes the devil may cry and I was like what is that effect <laughs> that's super cool and I fucked around in audacity and uh, in gold wave and figured out that you you can record your voice play backwards echo and then uninvert and that's how you get that sound that's cool and it sounds like a mystical fucking yeah psychic telekinetic message yeah. in your head yeah that's crazy all because the devil may cry show me your items oh this one is pleased to do so human you will not be disappointed uh okay that's a lot of stuff view standard shop. items view upgrades view non-human armors squid shop whoa okay uh I have 1400 Credits. Yep. Uh, this is all pretty expensive, and that sell tab is where you can uh, you can make more. So this is where the the item in uh, the inventory management I was discussing uh, comes into play. Okay. And then I can sort stuff by level, price, and how do I access the sell section? Uh, left, right, yeah. on the stick. Okay, um, I'm not gonna sell anything right now. I guess for now, I can buy back things too. You can buy back things too. Okay. Um, a lot of these things are pretty expensive. I could buy the Serta Foundation license for the Normandy Quartermaster. I don't know what it does, but I can afford it. It's a hundred credits. That was fast. No confirm, no nothing. And if I try to sell it, I cannot. Yeah. All right. Um, important note. Commander, it is good to see you again. Would you care to see some of its fantastic items today? The buyback um, only is the most recent 20 things. Show me your items. Okay. Oh, this one is pleased to do so, human. You will not be disappointed. Oh, upgrades. Affordable. Armor plating. Combat sensor. Improve detection level, because they jam my stuff. And increase the brute strength of the wearer. That's pretty cool. And the Y button sells all junk? Yeah. What would be considered junk? Um, stuff that is not, like, you know, usable as armor or weapons or... 
by any of my team gel yeah exactly so i can just press it then. so you're gonna pick up stuff that has no other purpose okay and then you can just uh so should i just like press it every time i'm here or every time it's available um i mean yeah you'll you'll like pick things up and i guess take a look at them in your inventory and see like a, a categorization of like stuff that is only good for selling okay all right interesting i think i'll be going whoops return soon this one receives oh. new shipments regularly i'm not trying to steal i i'm not, I'm not trying to steal it are you pressing the back button every time on that <laughs> how pressing that? x okay Commander, it is good to see you again like i wanted to skip this to see some and of then its fantastic items x today. is arming you when you're when you're standing still cuz i really i thought it was just back uh, i i'm, I'm <laughs> Big hat Logan here. Show me your items. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, this one is pleased to do so, human. You will not be disappointed. <laughs> Tentacles up. <laughs> Run your shit. <laughs> yeah. Um. All it has to do is scream as loud as possible and watch the blood come out of your nose and eyes. Sort the foundation armors. Okay. All right, let's move on. That's a Hanar. That is creepy. Get out of my head. Uh, Codec entry for it. The elf, the Hanar, are a citadel species known for excessive politeness. They speak with scrupulous precision and take offense at improper language. Hanar that expect to deal with other species take special courses to help them unlearn their tendency to take offense at improper speech. All Hanar have two names. The face name is known to the world. The soul name is kept for use among close friends and relations. Hanar never refer to themselves in the first person in conversation with someone they know on a face name basis. To do so is considered egotistical. So instead they refer to themselves as this one or the impersonal it. Their home world, Kajay, has 90% ocean cover and orbits an energetic white star, resulting in a permanent blanket of cloud. Due to the presence of Prothean ruins on the world, many Hanar worship them, and Hanar myths often speak of an elder race that civilized them by teaching them language. Racial humility. Yeah. Interesting. Pretty much. Yep. Very respectful. Face name and soul name. Super cool. Super cool. So name on your card. Name with your buddies. Yeah. Yeah. With the, with the fam <laughs> that's cool uh, and before you give Ashley any shit remember that you walked by one twice not even knowing it was alive <laughs> <laughs> Ashley you got anything to say about this where you at I can't separate them from the animals of the, 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 I can't tell the aliens yeah. oh my animals. god <laughs> and neither can you you walked by the pig thing <laughs> I didn't think it was an animal I thought it was decoration <laughs> This, I, is, this is a Christmas tree. I was going like this. It's like shopkeeper. This person in the back? No. Like, the little circle is on top. Well, it couldn't possibly be that weird pink thing. <laughs> that's not That's not a person. Oh, my God. Okay. Um, where do we go from here? Check your journal. Yeah. Krogan Bunty at the CSEC Academy. Yeah. So, um... Again, you have the uh, you have the follow up with uh, what Barlovan talked to you about, or you've got the Chorus Den in the wards. Okay, Chorus Den. Mm -hmm. I want to speak to Harkin. Uh, this, and I can't put a waypoint for this one. Where would it be? See, second like issue is here. Not Next. marking a map point. Well, we can go to the Sisek Academy since we know where that would be. Uh, yeah. Um, otherwise, though, I'm pretty sure it's just like walking over to the uh, the interest points that you see on the map there and. Uh, 
you should eventually get connected to it. I think because I, I think you haven't. Uh, if you go over to the left, uh, yeah, I think some of those points of interest with that are transitions into different areas. Okay, points of interest. I'm seeing like the, the those bang. those green things are like exits. Rapid transit to Citadel Tower, and then there's the others. Rapid transit to the wards. To the wards, and that's that would be your your yes. way to the. Uh, okay, thank you. Whoops, I think I put it off. Maybe. Okay, let's fake run. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> Like, is it literally then just completely pointless from a gameplay perspective? Like, you know? Like, I'm, I didn't know that. Is it, is it just a, a, a downside to use it in combat? <laughs> so tired. Is it real in the Legendary Edition? But it was, it was fake in 2007? Okay, it's real now. It used to be fake. Okay. The wards. Look, look how clean everything is. Yeah. Space janitors. In light of the recent attack on Eden Prime, many colonial investors are pulling their support for future projects. Proponents of expanded human colonization insist that Eden Prime was an isolated case. Nevertheless, colonist enrollment has dropped sharply. Many colonial proposals are on hold until backers have some reassurance that human colonies will be adequately protected. Did you catch the other Hanar that was talking to the Turian up there? <laughs> no? Okay. <laughs> okay. Have fun. <laughs> uh, your camera you think we'll oh, down here. He betrays your spaces games of Quasar before he makes his drop. Fist is gonna be pissed if we take down his supplier. That's the point. We want him angry. Angry people make mistakes. There's just something about Fist that makes me nervous. Good. He's a dangerous man. Now keep your eyes peeled for our mark. You a spacist, Reggie? No, I'm trying not to be. How was I supposed to know? It's a it's new species. I just woke. I just just woke up. Gosh. Huh. I mean, let me get to sounds, know these. Sounding like Grandpa, you know? Just, <laughs> things are moving fast. <laughs> Oh, nobody's here to watch me. By God, these bitches gay. Good for them. Good for them. <laughs> wow, they seem to be having a nice conversation, but oh, she's speaking at me, though. Damn. Got their attention. I see that. I see that. How you holding up, Lieutenant? Not too bad. No headaches worth mentioning lately. Maybe I'm getting used to the strain. Maybe you've just got a good stress release. I know that knocking the geth on their synthetic asses gets rid of my headaches. Okay. She wants to fuck up some robots. Yo, Ashley is... Spicy. What is behind this door? You like spice? Red? Yeah. You know. But you can... There is such a thing as over-spicing, you know? You can use too much spice. I mean, taste the chicken breast and find out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, cool music. <laughs> what was the context again? We were just yelling about, yo, season your goddamn chicken. <laughs> I forget what it was. <laughs> oh, the belt. Yeah, right. The the, the town on the belt. <laughs> okay, I remember now. Okay, okay. 
you know, space bars. Not really my kind of place, but there sure are some spectacular views here. Never been a real fan of crowds. Oh yeah, agoraphobic, or just uh, one of those people. Too many lights, too much noise. I see. You'll have the conversation. Not really my kind of place, but there sure are some spectacular. What about uh, Ashley? Where is she? Ashley. There you are. I mean, if this is considered packed, a lot of traffic bro. here. How fast do you think those cars are going? Oh. You think it's expensive to live here? Probably. Avoid uh, summer you festival time in Montreal. This is where the action is. Moreland. Hello there. Welcome to Moreland's famous shop. You want many good supplies, yes? <laughs> Wouldn't be a Star Wars without a space bar. Yeah. Let me see what you have. Oh, you will be pleased, I think. Very good things I have. You will see. Yeah, at some point I'll have to shop. Striker, some kind of pistol. Armor, okay. Oh, I can compare with X. Yep. Alright, well... You, you can, can go up to mid, thing. right? Yes, yep. I can. Increases maximum units by one. I can buy that. Unique item. This control for the Normandy. Yeah, I can buy all the unique items at least, right? You can afford it. Up, 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 up. Oh, there are upgrades too. I see. That's good enough. Hello there. Welcome to Moreland's famous shop. You want many goods... Oh, you will be pleased, I think. All right, we're skipping stuff. More armor. Yeah. For Turians and Krogans. Thank you. Unique Any items are good to buy. Yeah. Anyone else wants to talk? Conrad Werner. Is that really... Wow, it's you. It is me. You're Commander Shepard, the hero of Eden Prime. I am so honored to meet you. Do I know you? Uh, no, no, I'm just a fan. One of your biggest fans, actually. My name is Conrad. Conrad Werner. They say you killed more than a hundred Geth on Eden Prime. Your reputation precedes you. Leave me alone. Hey, you were, I heard you. You were like, yeah, it was me. What's this? <laughs> yeah, but it was weird after. Well, you, you love it. You love the <laughs> like, attention. Like, yeah. Don't front. Me? Do I know you? Yeah, I really, uh, Chill. Chill. I'm just a regular guy. I put my pants on one leg at a time. I'm just doing my job. I just try to help. Fine. Okay. I spend most of the time trying to stay alive and help the colonists. Hey, uh, I know you're probably busy, but um, do you have time for a quick autograph? No problem, buddy. Anything for a fan. Here. Thanks. I really appreciate it. My wife is going to be so impressed. I'll let you get back to work. Oh, but next time you're on Earth, I'd love to buy you a drink. Thanks again. Sure. Bring your wife. Excuse me? Well, I mean, I'm just being polite and cordial. Citadel, the fan. Conrad Werner. You probably haven't seen the last of Conrad. What harm could be in talking with him if you meet again? That's true. Okay. All right. Oh, that was cool. Oh, more people here. Bring your wife next time, Reggie says to the, to the fan. I'm friendly. <laughs> You know, like don't leave her home and it's just all have fun. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Best place on this ward to buy upgrades. You think? Prices are pretty good here. Oh damn. Have you been to the Emporium up on the Presidium? Yeah, it's 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 alright. <laughs> it's alright. I didn't even know who was working there for the longest time. Hello, Earth Clan. 
No doubt you've just come back from the colonies. The colonies. Will you be needing supplies? What colonies are you talking about? Oh, my mistake, Earth Clan. I assumed. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Pharos? Novaria? Well, if you haven't heard of them yet, I'm sure you will soon. But it doesn't matter where you hail from. My goods are available to all. What can you tell me about Novaria? Uh -huh. The corporate capital of the Attican Traverse. Very cold. Very snowy. I don't get too many clients from there. They all have their own private suppliers. I'd like to know more about Pharos. It's an old Prothean world. Their buildings still litter the surface. The humans aren't the first to colonize it, but they are the most recent. Hmm. I just realized I haven't heard from my contact on that planet for some time. Ah, well, I'm sure he's fine. Is your name expat or are you an expat? Oh. Hmm. Show me what you've got. Might Most be an actual excellent. expat. I am sure you will find something pleasing. Oh, I don't have to choose. Cool. We can just get right in the, in the shop. That's good. Amplifiers, cipher tools, guns, unique item. Man, this is expensive. Oh, it's starting to get there. Yeah. Interesting. Very interesting. Uh, did I talk to everyone? I don't think you bought this here. I don't sell this mod. Look, I know it was you. I remember your face. Really? That's impressive. Usually you <laughs> humans can't tell one Turian from one. <laughs> this was the place. Now are you going to give me a refund or not? Do you have your proof of purchase? What? No, no. I, I, I don't think you ever gave me one. I'm sorry, then. I can't help you. But what would you... Can't help you. <laughs> Get out of here. Get out of here with your thing. <sighs> Alright. The Ferengi are alive and well. <laughs> oop, 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 oop. Nothing here? Okay, cool. Alright. The low rewards. I mean, you won't? Commander Shepard? Excuse me, Commander Shepard! I'm behind you. Are you blind? Oh, okay, you just can't. She sensed your, your body. presence. I see. I'm Emily Wong. I'm an investigative journalist working here on the Citadel. Could I have a moment of your time? Uh. What do you need? I've been hunting for evidence of corruption and organized crime on the Citadel, but there are places I can't go. I was hoping you might share anything you find during your own investigation. I can make it worth your time. How do you know that my investigation is going to uncover anything you need? You wouldn't be investigating if it weren't big. And if it's big, it's something I'd like to hear about. You've got to have access to better sources. Yeah. Why contact me? I'm using every source I can find, but I think I've got a better shot with you. According to your file, you survived back on Akuz when everyone else in your squad got killed. If anyone can find the worst elements of the Citadel and live to tell about it, it's you. How do you know I'm investigating anything here on the Citadel? I'm a good journalist, Commander Shepard. Word gets around. Huh. I guess. Yeah. Maybe I can help. How you feel about the press? You want to help that? I usually don't, like, trust all the press. Okay. Are they corrupt? I, I don't think anyone does. Who owns it? Well. Is it the people? Well. <laughs> there's, there's a lot of different organizations. There you go. Uh, you can do a bias check. See what's going on. I'm here to do my Space job. Space Rupert yours. Murdoch. <laughs> I see, Commander. I apologize. No. Damn. Walk. Wow, that was fast. Wow. Walk. Shut her down. Shut her down. Alright. I don't trust. If the Citadel is like this, and if everybody hates each other like that, 
and the press is allowed to exist, there's no way that the press is not crooked. That's gonna be my take on that. Fuck your quests. Big place. That your professional opinion, sir? <laughs> <laughs> this isn't a station, it's a city. There must be millions here. It can't be possible to track everyone coming and going. This makes Jump Zero look like a portage on, and it's the largest deep space station the Alliance has. Jump Zero is big, but this is a whole nother scale. Look at the ward arms. How do they keep all that mass from flying apart? Yeah, why keep the humans out? No wonder the Council treats us like outsiders. We'd be just another drop in a bucket they already can't carry. They must figure us for one more gang of FNGs looking for a handout. I doubt it's personal. It's gotta be a balancing act, like every other government. Why not? We've got oceans, beautiful women, this emotion called love. According to the old vids, we have everything they want. Hey. If you expect to get me in a tinfoil miniskirt and thigh-high boots, I want dinner first. Sir. <laughs> That will be enough, Chief. <laughs> How many credits do I have left? I spent so much on these unique items. You still have some money. <laughs> Is it enough for a Big Mac? <laughs> can, can I take her out? Okay. Yeah, yeah, it's all right. At ease, Lieutenant. I can't see her in a skirt anyway. Damn straight you can't. Ready to move out, sir. Any minute now. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. How you feel about Burger King? <laughs> Ew. Spicy fries. Yeah, I guess. But they have terrible chicken nuggets. The worst. You know, like they give you like forty nuggets for like two dollars and shit. Bro, garbage. You, you walked into Burger King. <laughs> you get what you get. <laughs> All right. You don't get to walk in those hey, doors and complain. Shepherd, right? <laughs> I saw the monument at Akuz. They got a whole section about you there. It's a miracle you survived. Looks like you have a fan. I'm sorry, I just never thought I'd meet someone like you in person. Uh, my name's Lang, Officer Eddie Lang, Citadel Security. It's an honor to meet you, Commander. What are you doing down here in the wards? Anything I can help you with? Why'd you join Citadel Security? I don't know. Seemed like the right thing to do, you know? Maybe it's in my blood. My grandfather was a cop back on Earth. It's kind of what CSEC is. Police for the Citadel. I'm still pretty new at it, but I like it so far. Way more interesting than staying back on Earth. You get to meet all kinds of cool aliens. Like those Hanar. Wild. Plus, CSEC gets a lot of respect here. We uphold the law. People, even aliens, appreciate that. I got a question, Lang. Your chin. Where the fuck is it? <laughs> How do you like working here on the Citadel? This place is amazing. I've been here almost a year and I still haven't seen a tenth of it. The Presidium's just so beautiful. Good place to go and relax. But I really like it here down in the wards. There's always something going on somewhere. Mm -hmm. Like that new club they just opened a few months ago, Flux. Wicked scene in there, Commander. You should check it out when you have some time. Sure, sure. What do you know about the Spectres? Just the stuff they show in the vids. They always make them out to be super agents on secret missions to save the galaxy. I know it's not really like that, though. Some of the other CSEC guys don't like them too much, figure they shouldn't be able to operate outside the law. But if they were so bad, the council wouldn't use them, right? Uh-huh. Yeah, you don't know much, buddy. Do you know a CSEC He's a officer fan. named Harkin? I shouldn't really say too much. He's been on the force a lot longer than me. But I've heard things, you know? Drinking on the job, taking bribes, that kind of thing. Rumors mostly, but they suspended him, so some of it must be true. I have to go. Right. You're probably real busy. Well, see you around, Commander. At ease. Loser. Wow. <laughs> wow, the disrespect. <laughs> oh! Yo, out here in public? There's no sheets to... There's... Oh, I can't use it for... Okay. Well, you just did. I just get the codec entry and that's it. I can't actually... Anyway. Technology! 
Uh, while calm buoys buoys yeah. allow rapid transmission, there is a finite amount of bandwidth available. Given that trillions of people may be trying to pass a message through a given buoy at any one time, access to the network is parceled out on priority tiers. The Citadel Council and the Spectres have absolute priority. If they are using all the bandwidth, everyone else must wait. Individual governments and their militaries enjoy the next highest tier. During wartime, civilian communication can suffer hours or even days of lag. Intelligence agency agencies study ping time through various systems to predict military buildups. Below the governments and militaries, uh, bandwidth priority is sold to the highest bidder. Media conglomerates, particularly headline news networks, purchase higher priority to provide their viewers with timely information. Corporations that require timely information and response capability, for example, financial institutions and investment firms, also invest heavily in priority access. The funds acquired through the sales of bandwidth are used to maintain and expand the communication infrastructure. While everyone with a computer has guaranteed free and unlimited access to the galactic extranet, they are last in line for bandwidth and may have to wait for their request to be processed. Bandwidth Resale Corporation use investment capital to purchase blocks of high priority access made available by paid subscription. Bro, you are 200,000 light years away from Earth, and somehow Videotron is still like, hey, <laughs> hey, do you want to sign up? <laughs> you want to sign up? We own the pipes. They ain't, Not at all. The pipes ain't that fat, but we're the only plan in town. It's us or Bell. <laughs> you got two choices. Fucking leaving the Earth behind. Bell and Videotron still <sighs> with a grip on it, you know. All right, planets and location. Oh, Pharos is a habitable world in the Attic and Basin. Comcast cluster. for you Americans. Two yeah. Two thirds of the habitable surface is covered with the ruins of a crumbling Prothean megatropolis. In the millennia since the Prothean extinction, the ruins have been repeatedly picked over by looters many times. Pharos was considered a poor prospect for colonization, as little open ground remains for agriculture. The only sizable freshwater sources are the poles, which are tapped by the decaying Prothean aqueduct systems. The dead cities, while in good condition considering their antiquity, are of uncertain stability. Ground level is congested by a dozen meters of fallen debris, and the air is fouled by dust. In 2178, the Human Exogeny Corporation announced its intention to place a permanent colony on Pharos to thoroughly explore the ruins. The pioneer settlement was placed on the upper levels of several intact skyscrapers, using the surviving Prothean aqueducts and rooftop hydroponic gardens to support the population. Yep. You gotta cope, man. <laughs> you gotta cope. At Hydrocopium. All right, what else we got? What's going on? Did the mouse move or something? The mouse might have moved, but did it take control away from you? Oh, my controller turned off. Controller turned off. Bleh. All right, all right, all right. Am I dead? My controller is dead. Let me see. Sure. Oh, shit. Whoa. Uh -oh. I need more power. Okay. Well, yeah. No worries. I kept all the batteries from back before we got these uh, non-lav mics. And they're coming in handy as, like, a great source for controller batteries. Because we went through a fuck ton of them back when we were doing the clip-on thing. So... These are dead too, sorry. Next test. I want to learn about these planets. I want to learn about these haters. Which ones now? All of them? They're all haters. <laughs> Alright, there you go. Hey. Except for the... 
What's the name of the, the slow gravity? The Elcor are bros. Elcor are cool. The Elcor are bros. Elcor are cool for now. Yeah, sorry ain't bad either. Novaria is a cool, rocky world with most of its hydrosphere locked up in massive glaciers. A privately chartered colony world, the planet is owned by the Novaria Development Corporation Holding Company. The NDC is funded by investment capital from two dozen high technology development firms and administrated by an executive board representing their interests. The investors built remote hot labs in isolated locations across Novaria's surface. These facilities are used for research too dangerous or controversial to be performed elsewhere, as Novaria is technically not part of Citadel space and therefore exempt from council law. By special arrangement, Citadel special tactics and reconnaissance agents have been granted extraterritorial privileges, but it remains to be seen how committed the executive board is to that principle. Given its unique situation, it is understandable that Novaria is often implicated in all manner of wild conspiracy theories. Yeah, if you thought the future held uh, a post-business world, you're fucking mistaken yeah. sorely. <laughs> if you thought space bureaucracy would not be a thing, you are sorely mistaken. Kind of sad about it. We are major complex government full in it. Well, you told Emily Wong that you didn't want to help her find information. You might still run across something of interest. Oh, there you go. You told Emily Wong to fuck off, yeah. journo. <laughs> Learn how to play Cuphead, Fucking. says Reggie. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking CNN motherfuckers. All right. Okay. Okay. Uh, look like we're a little tight on time. Mm -hmm. So you're auto-saved, though. I think you'll be fine. Yeah. Should um, be good. You can just hit I that can. manual. Just hey! to, you know, to lock it in. Save completed. The legend begins. Worlds meet Red Shepherd. Ooh! Red Shepherd meet the world. Put it away. Put it away. <laughs> Hold on. Nice to meet you. <laughs> Wait. Nice to meet you. <laughs> Let's go. No, wait, wait, let me just find the blue. Where are the blue? No blues around, huh? Damn. I'm fiending! Ah! I can see it! Blue meat red? Hey, girl. Okay, listen. Hey? Not interested. Oh, my God! Don't you know who I am? I'm Red Shepherd. Do I have to even look? Oh, Is he gone? <sighs> Dude! Ashley, say some shit. A lot of traffic here. How fast <laughs> oh, no, that's not what I was thinking going. for. <laughs> Just the world will be receptive. Just wait. God oh, damn it. Oh, Give it oh, time. <laughs> you fucking. Uh.